<laughs> oh, it does have some pickup, that's for sure. This is intoxicating. Welcome to another CRF 300 video. Like I told you guys earlier in a couple episodes back, I'm gonna do a modification to the CRF 300 and we're gonna do race box testing on the acceleration times before and after these modifications. So let's see what 550 Performance has sent me from United States. This is a sponsored video because 550 Performance was kind enough to send me these items with no cost so i basically only took the importing cost to finland pay the taxes on all that but 550 performance is sponsoring this video so go ahead and check the website there's a lot of information about these parts and uh different tunes to different bikes i'm gonna show you the bike build from start to finish and then we're gonna see the race box results after the bike is tuned up let's check the first and the most important part so this is the ecu it's been tuned up by 550 performance and there is a euro mod inside this for level 1.0 and it's 95 octane fuel i guess i can run it with 98 as well if i want to use the high octane fuel that's available in finland all over the place and the next part is the high flow lid to the airbox so you get the complete kit and there is this frog skin on the hole that they make so that water wouldn't go in as easily as it otherwise might be but this is so high up in the bike's frame so you have to be really deep in a puddle to really get any moisture inside this box and if you do there is a drain hole underneath so it's not a, it's not like the engine is gonna die immediately the most difficult part to put in is this cb300 stack to the airbox so this comes between the engine and the airbox basically if you want to install this part you have to drill the airbox hole a little bit bigger and then squeeze this inside the new drilled hole all this does is give you this flange for better airflow and it is a little actually a lot shorter than the stock part and uh, it should be the same width here from the beginning but basically it's just a straight pipe from the cb300 bike so this should improve the airflow and maverick from 550 told me that i should definitely do this mod but i have a little caveat about doing this modification I'm gonna do this a little bit differently if I can manage to do so. So you will see that later in this video. So those are the three parts that the 550 performance guy sent you in uh, with the level one parts. So let's take all the necessary stuff out of the CRF 300 and let's start doing these modifications. I'll try to empty the tank as much as I can from the top and uh, then I guess we just have to get uh, some parts off the bike so we get access to this airbox here. It's pretty blocked off but uh, let's see how we manage. Guess it's pretty empty now. I'm guessing there was a uh, five liters or something here. Not a bad job on the CRF. You can get access to the tank pretty easily here. So nice. We're going to be replacing this one, the stock exhaust with the Dominator exhaust, and it's going to be all the way from the start of the engine. So the whole thing needs to come off. Whoa, this is a heavy boy. There's the cat at the beginning and then the end can. This is the reason why the CRF is so quiet. <laughs> Perkele, koska oluen paikka. So here's the situation so far. You have to take the tank off. So just remove the fuel line. I did it from the tank side. I think that 
might be a little bit easier and you don't get so much shit in here so easy so it is easier to keep it this clean because it's up here out of the way then you have the electronics to the tank and then you have this breathing hose you just have to remember to put this back in so they are gonna live there fine you can see the throat there a little bit looking pretty dirty really dusty because you can't really wash this here so it just gathers dust over the over the months and years i'm actually going to remove the battery and then i'm going to remove this toolbox and the rear plastics here shimmy this whole thing out completely or just a little bit enough for the airbox to be removed from here behind the bike so you have to get this plastic off Yeah, so you can see here, I did take the battery box out. It's just hanging there, which is fine. But it is a pain to get these bolts off if you <laughs> don't know where they are. They're all underneath these cables. So there's at least three or four different places where this airbox attaches to the frame here and the battery box. So be careful when taking it out. But as you can see now, the airbox is now fully suspended only from the boot there. So I can start taking it out from the bike real carefully. I will try to clean this section here first so that nothing goes in the engine because it's pretty dirty. Okay, we are out the boot. Taking the lid off here at this point makes things easier. So let's take it out. It is tight, especially with this Endor tire. Yeah, but it does come off. All right, here's the airbox. So the first thing we needed to do is take the extra bit from here on the side off. So it's not in our way. And as you can see, the even the stock part here is glued in so let's see how easy it is to actually get this off yeah I think it it's gonna come off just press it from the sides little by little now we just twist it a little bit yep so there it is it's pristine clean inside nothing in here so let's put the big box aside for a moment and take some of these glue off so now that the parts are off the bike we can see the CB300 part that we are supposed to put in instead of this stock part if you look at the video Jake the garden snake posted I can link it down below but I won't use the clips on of his video to not get demonetized he is actually installing this part into the stock airbox and what he is also stating in the video that this part is gonna live a little bit stressed in the throttle body. So it's gonna be twisted like this a little bit constantly over the life cycle of this part in the bike. So I don't wanna do that. If we RTV silicone this part in that, in, enlarge this hole for this to fit, we're actually gonna leave this part stressed in the throttle body. And that's never good. If you leave a part like this stressed, it might crack at some point. And if this part leaks air, it's a done deal with that engine. You have to do an engine rebuild. At least the top part of the engine is going to be ruined if you get sand and stuff through here to the engine. So I'm going to try to stay with the stock part. And I'm going to show you why. If you measure the throttle body of the CB300 part, you actually get pretty much the same result as the stock part. So this is uh, 39, maybe 40 millimeters. Yeah, pretty close. And the stock part is, uh, let me put it in, 30, 41 millimeters. So this is actually wider at the end of, end of the pipe. But then if we measure this, that comes away from the engine, this is 40, 41 millimeters. And if we measure the long stock part here at the end, it's only 36, maybe 
yeah, 36 and a half millimeters. So this is going down on the millimeters towards the end. My idea is to cut this from here or pretty close to here and just put it in. No, 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 no. As we see in this graph here that the 550 performance sent me, we are gonna make a lot of turbulence in, in this intake if we just cut this short. Maybe we get the same size as the CP300 part, but because the end is not flanged like this, we're gonna create a lot of turbulence in the box here. So I'm actually going to try and make this part from this metal part to this stock pipe. So we're gonna cut this velocity stack pipe from here where my nail is and make it shorter. And then we're gonna cut this somewhere here and ram this inside the pipe by force. And if we feel like it needs it, I can put some RTV silicone here so it's never coming off. That creates a situation where we have a same length pipe, pretty much the same size pipe, and we can still use the stock part. So the seal here is gonna be perfect and it's not gonna be stressed inside the airbox. Let's get on with it. I'm gonna try this. Actually, this was the other way around. I'm gonna try this mod and if it works and if we get a good result, maybe you can do this too. And you don't have to touch the airbox. You don't have to enlarge this intake. You don't need this part at all. You can just buy this one and make the stock part fit pretty much the same as this one. So that's the idea. Let's go ahead and try to do this now. So here's the stock part. Here's the metal that we've made. And I'm gonna cut this just after the second nubbin here. So first one, second one, I'm gonna cut it straight here. So I will just start by cutting it from this portion here. Just like that. Okay, so now the part is cut. And if we look at the graph, if we leave, leave this like this, it's gonna create a lot of turbulence and the flow is not gonna be great. The difference is apparently pretty huge if we just leave it in this state. But this is pretty malleable, the rubber here. So we should be able to put the metal part that we made inside and this is of course the part that I was cutting earlier. I did sandpaper this down with water and sandpaper. I think it was like 2000 microns or something. So there's no rough edges and uh, it's pretty much perfect. And I cleaned it and washed it and there's no residue here. Let's see. Yeah, it's tight. I don't think this needs any RTV silicone in addition because it's so tight the fitting fitting here. So now it's in. We can hopefully just twist it around a little bit. I think it's perfect. It uh, it is tight, but that's supposed to be tight because I don't we don't want this to come off at any point. And we can still seal this with silicone. So put some here, maybe put something underneath and uh, make it stick really tight. But I'm just gonna work it in completely. And then we can silicone this part here to make it a little bit, to glue it in a little bit more. Let's see how it fits here. All right, so that's how it looks. I think that's pretty nice. It looks like my, uh, the idea of cutting it from the second part here to leave some room for the, this part was a good one because now it, the metal stops right before this first section here, as you can see. So it is pulling the rubber out and uh, bigger a little bit. All right, let's measure the end. So we have the 40 mil in the new part, the modified part, and the CB300 that was supposed to be going in is maybe millimeter or 
two bigger, but 1.5 millimeter bigger. So the difference is very minor, I would say. So this is 40, a little bit over 40. So about a millimeter difference. I think that's, uh, I'm happy about that. So here's the side to side comparison. Pretty nice. This doesn't really create any friction, this middle part here, at least not much. It's very minor. If you can look at look at through here, you can clearly see that the pipe is pretty much straight, just like it was the, on the CB300 part here. So this is also straight. And the difference in length is like a, maybe one centimeter. Like if we put them here, it, this is turning a little bit down, but the difference is very minor. I think this is a definite success. We don't have to take the risk in modifying the airbox entry at all, and we can just put in the stock part. I think this is uh, even better than I expected, but pretty much exactly what I was looking for. Now we have the flange here. If we compare it to the stock one, it's almost identical. This might even be a little bit bigger and that cannot hurt. But of course it's a little bigger because it's 40 mil and this is 36 mil. Yeah, so I think we managed to create a flange here where it would otherwise be missing if we just cut this short. So I hope Maverick from 550 Performance is happy of about this uh, mod that I did, and I didn't use this part as he told me to. But this is my my idea. Now I can actually trust this seal here. I'm still gonna put RTV silicone in between here because even from factory it had the glue sealant here. So I'm gonna silicone this in, but now I know that when I install this part, it's gonna be exactly like it's meant to be from factory. Only thing is that the airflow through this pipe should be greatly improved. I still need to wash this and clean this, but uh, this doesn't go the same way in the airbox that it came out because this flange is not gonna fit through here. So what we need to do is take the filter out and then just shimmy it in through this hole, through this end first. So that's going to be a little bit of a trick to do, but I am guessing it's going to be able to do it because this is so malleable. We can just try to push it a little by little. We have to take this off from here, of course, but little by little, we should be able to do just that. Right, the, definitely the hardest part of the installation so far was getting this <laughs> the wrong way from inside out. So it does help if you put zip ties, crunch this up in a, in a B, like so, like squeeze it together and then put a zip tie here. So it keeps its form and goes a little bit like an S here. So inside and out and outside like this. So if it helps drastically if you put a zip tie there before you try this. And then remember to not use any, any flathead screwdrivers or anything with sharp edges. I use this end of a knife which very rounded edges and I just very gently try to squeeze this part out from the side. And it does take a lot of a uh, abuse this one it's not gonna it's not gonna break on you so that's it the part is now installed I will put some uh, RTV silicone even though there is already some in here I twisted it a little bit side to side and you can see the mark there that it's the right way around now I'll just put some on the outside to make absolutely make sure that it's not gonna move and it's not gonna leak when I ride the bike so I think this is a success so far. I will show you the insides of this box as well now that I got uh, the part in. Let me see if I can put a flashlight there with my phone. 
to help you see a little better here. Yeah, now you can see it better. Yeah, so pretty straight and uh, a lot bigger than the stock. Oh yeah, there you can see it better. Very nice, very nice. So here we go with the phone. Let's see how it looks from the inside. Yeah, you can see it here. That's the flange done. It's pretty close to the way it's gonna be with the CB300. I think this is like 98% exactly the same part at this, at this time, but now I think I can relax and trust the joint to the, to the engine way better, way better. So, let me see if I can put you even closer inside, yeah. There is that little plastic lip on below, but yeah, it's maybe it's gonna create some turbulence, but it is what it is. You can't get these perfect. This is a modified part at this time, so. But yeah, we got the flange installed, so it should be pretty good. All right, the last of the silicone is in. I know this is a little bit dirty business, but what can you do? So yeah, we have the silicone in all over the place. All right, the silicone has cured up real nice over the last 24 hours. So it's just been standing there on my table because I don't want to touch it before it's actually, actually dry. Now I can trust that it's not going anywhere and it is ready to be built back in the bike. So I'm gonna try to put all this crap back together and then we're gonna change the exhaust and after that we're gonna and try the new tune for the first time and see how the bike actually sounds with the Dominator exhaust. So this is the part where if you don't use the stock part, you will never get it lined up as well as I just did. So I would definitely highly recommend using the stock part. It's in there. Boy, I lost it. All right, all right, let's connect the battery. This is the moment you always feel like, did I remember everything? Is everything really in the bike? I've had the worst luck over the last couple of weeks. So I'm really hoping everything's okay with the bike now. Let's see if we get power. Oh, gas pump is on. Relay activated. Let's see what it sounds like. That's nasty. All right, the exhaust is now installed. I'm just gonna wipe some of the excess paste off here and then we're gonna start it again. Now for the second time. Pretty good looking this one. I like the black color on the end of this exhaust. I hope it stays looking good. And this is actually real carbon. At least that, that's what they said. I hope Dominator would send the O-ring to the exhaust that you have to change because it doesn't in get included in, in the package. So you have to know to buy it. But uh, yeah, it's a cheap part. Come on, Dominator. You can put it in. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's insane. Woo. Woo. 
<laughs> wow! <laughs> That's insane! <laughs> it's just as insane as me! Woo. Wow! If you like a loud exhaust, this is definitely loud! All right, let's do the first outdoor test in the city riding. So very slow speeds to see if there's jerkiness is off from the Honda CRF. So let's start the bike and listen to the sounds. <laughs> it's very, very loud. <laughs> if you don't like a loud exhaust, you're not gonna like the Dominator exhaust. It has the DP killer in and it's the loudest exhaust I've ever heard in my own bikes at least. So let's go out for a ride and see if I'm ashamed of this exhaust in the city, city and town riding. I probably need to control the throttle a little bit. It's not absolutely horrific if you just control the speed and your throttle and you don't do this. If you do that, everyone's gonna notice you, but other than that, it doesn't really seem all that horrific. Maybe you could even say that police is not gonna stop you if, if you just chill with the bike like this, but uh, it's definitely loud. That's, that's something I notice immediately. While we stand here, we notice that the idles, idle RPM has been raised up a little bit, so it's about one and a half thousand, so the idle is gonna be a little bit higher. But it should also prevent the bike from uh, flaming out in this, these situations, because the idle is not so low. I bet if you do longer distances and longer rides, you're gonna probably wanna use earplugs with this exhaust. It's pretty nasty, I would even say. <laughs> if you like this loudness, it's definitely not maybe even most people like the loud exhaust i don't notice uh, the jerkiness anymore at least it's uh, definitely improved it's definitely not as bad as it used to be it is a loud one it is a loud one though so i would prefer staying off-road with this exhaust in town riding this is not really ideal but it's not offensive or anything, but I'm betting if a police officer would pull next to me, they might ask some questions, especially in some countries. But if you just, if you don't rev it out in the city center, you might be okay. <laughs> oh, it does have some pickup, that's for sure. So let's get out the city, let's get some off-roading done and see how the bike really feels when you open it up. But here, just cruising, doing 60, it's not terrible. I can live with it. Like, it, it's not a problem if I'm planning a trans-euro trail trip, like a couple of weeks somewhere. Like in the, in the summertime, I might do that. So the sound is de definitely not bad when you ride like this. It's only when you open it up, that's when you know, that's when you know you have something else than stock exhausting. Alright, let's get off the road a little bit and see how the bike feels when you open her up, now that it's warmed up. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> I have to say that... Uh, <laughs> wow! I've never done this with fifth gear. It has so much pull now. Alright, I'm gonna shut up and you can just listen to the bike.
wow I have to say that uh, <laughs> the improvement is <laughs> oh my goodness my goodness this little Honda has been awakened wow the difference is massive okay there might be some placebo in this but <laughs> this uh, I, I swear to you the difference is definitely definitely about 20 percent in here in the low rpm range i don't feel much but after the bike hits 6000 and all the way at least to 9000 the bike pulls drastically better so the difference on the higher higher rpm ranges from middle of middle to the top of the rpm rpm range is uh, absolutely massive i thought it wouldn't would not be this big but it is big it's really big okay let's do it again this is intoxicating The way it picks up speed now is crazy. Especially here in the top RPM ranges. It has changed a lot. Wow. Wow. It's pulling the front wheel up like crazy in those little jumps it never used to do that wow wow this is a workout now absolutely insane if i had to guess i would i'm gonna do the testing on the race box equipment on the next video and we will see how much of a difference does this make from 30 to 120 kilometers an hour and if i had to guess the difference is multiple seconds multiple seconds i think the best run for me last video was like uh, 16 seconds from 30 to 120 and if i had to guess this might go even as low as 12 seconds because the way it feels is uh, the difference is just huge to ride it it used to be really chilled out but right now it's like the difference is so so much i have to tip my hat to the 550 performance guys for doing this mod to the ecu it's just wow the little honda is alive remember to subscribe so you can see the acceleration test that i'm gonna be doing with this with this modded CRF 300 and you will be able to see some numbers and not just this ass dyno that I'm doing here but from my ass dyno I would say the bike is crazy different it is completely transformed I would have never believed it myself like I thought I would get like maybe quarter of this that I'm getting the difference is way bigger than I thought like, wow this actually feels like a small road bike now loud.